We've got some new gear to play with today, guys. This is the Summit Filter System by Polar Pro. And to be perfectly honest, I don't know much about it because this product isn't out yet, at least not for me. If you're watching this video, it goes on sale today, so you can check it out in the link in the description below. But Polar Pro recently reached out and they said, we wanna sponsor a video where you take a picture of whatever you want using our new Summit Filter System. But before we go outside and I figure out what I wanna take a picture of, let me figure out what I'm actually working with here. Let's unbox this. Whoa! Start with the big box first. Beautiful, beautiful. And inside you can see we have the filter holder itself. Looks like we've got some rectangular filters here. Unlike most filters that I'm used to that are just pure glass, these have frames around them. So you can actually use this and grab it from all four sides and you're not going to be getting fingerprints all over your glass. That's really nice. Now you might think that these frames would be made of plastic. This is not plastic, this is aluminum. This matte box that we have on the front here, if it's called a matte box when it's this size, but it's this really thick rubber. And I think that's gonna be great for cutting down on reflections. You're also not going to have to deal with any corrosion there. On the back here, you're gonna notice there's this gear that spins. I think this means that it's also going to work with circular filters as well. Let's see what's in the next little bag here. So this little travel bag here has two additional filters inside. Are these directions? Yes, directions, this is what I need. Okay, I'm starting to understand here. You attach this to your lens, then this attaches to that, and then you can actually attach multiple types of filters onto this. So you could have circular and rectangular filters at the exact same time. I'm not totally sure, but let me see if I can figure this out. What is the filter size on this? 82, 82. So I'm gonna grab the 82 millimeter filter here. Let's see if this slides on. All right, then I think this snaps on here. That is securely in place. All right, so I've got two filters here. These look like circular filters. I have a CPL, which I would imagine is circular polarizer. And then we've got a neutral density 64 here. Let's go with the circular polarizer. All right, so what I have done now is I have added my circular polarizer to this entire filter holder here, and then using these gears on the side, I can turn. So this is a little hard for you guys to see, but there's basically two different lips inside here, and the idea here is that you could have one square or rectangular filter that goes straight down, and there's a hard stop right below it, but then there's another lip where we could put graduated neutral density filters like this. And if we put this in the front one, then we can slide down below here. You can see I can keep pushing it and pushing it. And the whole idea here is that you're going to be using graduated neutral density filters to get a correct exposure of your foreground and the sky. In many cases, your foreground is gonna be way darker than your sky. So if you're shooting, say, into the sun, maybe you're shooting a sunset or a sunrise, the sky is gonna be pure blown out white if you get a correct exposure on the foreground. So what a lot of photographers do is they purposefully underexpose and then they're trying to boost up those shadows when they get into post or they're taking multiple exposures and putting them together. But real photographers, real landscape photographers, the purists, this is how they get those shots perfectly done in camera. In the box, it also comes with this, a neutral density 64. Let's see what this is. Okay, so this is a square filter. And this is what I was saying earlier. You can put this in the front thread spot and it's going to go straight down and then lock into place. So I'm gonna put this right behind here. Each one of these filters, like I said, has these uh, frames around them and it makes it really easy to grab. You're not actually touching the glass. Each one also has a little notch that you can grab with your fingernail. And the rectangular ones are taller and the notches on the left and the square ones are shorter in the notches on the right. So it makes it really easy for you to pull out the filters that are in the back or the filters that you have in the front as well. Now, I'm actually going to try to get this shot tonight. I've picked out a location that I think is gonna look really cool. 
and sun sets in approximately one hour from now. So I really need to hurry. But before we go outside, let me just quickly tell you what else comes in the box here. You also get a 77 millimeter ring here. A lot of lenses have a 77 millimeter uh, front thread size. So this is gonna work for that. If you have other lenses that you're gonna want this to work with, you're gonna have to buy some extra rings like this, but this is gonna save you so much money in the long term because you're not having to buy circular polarizers and graduated neutral density filters and circular neutral density filters for every single one of your lenses. Instead, all you have to have is one of these cheap pieces of aluminum and then this filter system will work with whatever other lens you might have. Now, Polar Pro sent me more stuff as well. Let's see what we have here. We have a neutral density 1000. We have a neutral density 100K, and we have a neutral density eight graduated. So as you can see, we've got tons of filters to play with. I certainly do not need to use all of these for this one shot. I think I'm probably gonna use two, maybe three filters to pull this off. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, I'm late. So let's head outside and see if I can pull this off. All right, guys, as you can see, I am on the beach. And if you can remember back to a few months ago, I actually did another landscape photograph at a beautiful, gigantic boulder that's out in the ocean. But I was at a completely different beach then. I was actually very close to it, shooting wide angle, very close to the water. Today, that same rock is going to be in my photograph, but it is really far away. Now, the other thing that recently happened a couple months ago is I was filming another video. Holy sh**. All right, we gotta move, man. We gotta move. This is not good. We actually had the D850 repaired, and so here I am, right next to the ocean one more time, and guess what I forgot? I forgot the rubber gasket on the bottom of the camera that's what destroyed the camera last time. So this is probably not the best location to shoot, but this is, this is the shot that I want. My foreground element is gonna be this really small rock here in front of me, but instead of getting really close and shooting wide, I've actually zoomed all the way in to 70 millimeters. As you can see on the front of my lens here, I've got the 82 millimeter Summit adapter ring. It's, it's a little easier to work with a camera without dark filters on the front element. So I just wanna make sure that I, I kind of have a game plan before I put the filter holder on. So the first thing I'm going to add is the filter holder itself with the circular polarizer already installed here. And I'm going to flip this into video mode. So as I turn this, you can see some pretty significant changes in the water, the sky, the color, and the exposure. The reflections in the water are changing as well. So I'm just going to turn this so that I get a nice, rich, sky and I'm going to cut down on some of these reflections in the water as well. Make sure your plate is tight before beginning. Yeah, right now this is just the polarizer, but this is looking really good. I'm just doing a few tests here just to see what one second exposures look like. I personally feel like it's too much, but again, it's up to you. Now, as you can imagine, our sky is a little bit brighter than the rest of the shot. We actually have direct sunlight that's hitting these clouds still. So I'm going to add the graduated neutral density filter to this. Keep in mind that I've rotated this sideways because I have a vertical orientation on the shot here and I'm going to push it down and I'm going to look at live view as I do it and darken up that sky. And check this out as I push it down. You can see how we can darken just the sky or brighten the sky. Big differences there. While we still have a little light, I'm going to go a little crazy here. Let's do a multi-second exposure. I'm gonna drop my ISO all the way down to low one. I'm going all the way up to F22 right now. Let's see if, what a two second exposure looks like. That looks cool, that looks cool. I love when I get, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, I feel like I've gotten a lot of great shots. I'm gonna go ahead and add that additional neutral density filter. And let's see if we can do a minute, two minute long exposure. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and lock the focus here because I'm sure the camera's not gonna be able to focus with this much 
neutral density in front of the lens. Yeah, I can't even see. So right now I'm setting the camera to the two tick marks. That can be bulb mode on some cameras. Basically what this does is when I press the button, it's going to open the shutter and then I have to press the shutter again to stop it. Then I'm going to use my Apple Watch here, set my timer for two minutes. Okay, two minutes and counting. So now I can wait for two minutes. When Siri tells me it's time, I'm going to hit the shutter button one more time and I will manually stop the exposure. In the last video where I destroyed all the camera gear, everybody was like, the number one rule in nature photography, never turn your back to the ocean. I have it this time. I am always keeping an eye on these waves. Patrick is handing me everything. The ocean will not win today, my friends. Okay, I actually like this. I was wrong. Whoa! All right, I'm done. I'm done. I can't believe I saved it. I can't believe it. <laughs> so I'm back on the computer. I've had time to go through my images. I've edited a few of these. This one's probably my favorite here. This is a single exposure. And uh, although I liked some that had longer exposures, I think the shorter exposures, you know, quarter of a second, half second are my favorite, simply because I want to see a little bit of detail in the waves. I think that looks really nice. Now, I think this shot turned out okay, but the truth is I don't love it. I feel like the location isn't great. The rocks in the back are a little bit jumbled. And the truth is Polar Pro sent me some pretty awesome filters that I didn't even get a chance to use. One of them being a 16.7 stop neutral density filter. I've never used anything like that before. So I'm going to head back outside and I'm going to find a reason to use that filter. Hopefully I can come up with a shot that's better than this. Okay, so I've been scouting out a ton of different areas here in Umacao, Puerto Rico, and I'm currently at the Yacht Club in Palmas del Mar. I had to get special permission to shoot here. This is a private club. And the owner or the manager, whoever I spoke with said, as long as you say where you took the picture, you can take the picture. There is this incredible rock formation out in the ocean. And then behind that is Vieques, which is an amazing island in the distance. I'm shooting with a 70 to 200 millimeter lens and I am zooming in all the way to 200 millimeters. I have the exact same filters that I used before, plus one extra that I'm going to add in just one second. I'm going to first set the circular polarizer here. I'm gonna make sure that I get a nice rich sky and get some of the reflection off of the water. I'm then going to add in my variable neutral density filter to darken up that sky a little bit. And then this is the secret sauce here. This is the ND100K. This is 16.7 stops. I cannot see through this at all. I mean, it looks like it's completely black. All right, so I've got my camera locked down here. I have it focused on the rock and I have it set to manual focus. I'm not gonna be able to focus when I add this neutral density filter. I've also turned off vibration compensation. We don't want that element moving around when I'm taking a picture. I think I'm ready to add the 16.7 stop neutral density filter. And in live view or through the viewfinder here, it's just black. You can't see anything. So I've done the math here and the math is giving me around an eight minute long exposure shot at F8 at ISO 100. I'm sure I'm gonna be off a little bit, but I'm gonna do some test shots here, shoot through this exposure range. I'm also going to be shooting through sunset tonight, so I'm sure my exposures are going to get longer and longer, but I'm hoping that I can blur out this water because it's really turbulent right now, and I also wanna see some movement in those clouds, and that's what we're really looking for in multi-minute long exposures. All right, we're back at the computer, and I've had a chance to go through my images. After the camera stopped rolling, I shot some really nice shots that were both vertical and horizontal, but out of all of them, this is my favorite. And I gotta tell you, I really like this shot. This is the first landscape photo I've ever taken that I would actually want to print and hang on my wall because it's so simple and subdued. It's just nice. I think a lot of landscape photos that are ultra vibrant and sharp and wide angle, they're a little over the top for me. This is definitely more my style when it comes to art. And you know, if you don't like the color, you could desaturate this, make it a beautiful black and white as well. Now remember, I've been playing with these filters before they've come out. So I honestly do not know how much they cost, but I'm going to assume that this is an extremely expensive system. This is the fanciest filter holder kit I have ever seen in my life. It's certainly the most fancy filters I've ever used. When I release this video is the day that this product goes up for sale officially. So you can click on the link in the description if you wanna see the price. 
we're probably gonna figure out the price at the exact same time. And if you're interested in taking your photography to the next level, especially landscape photography, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. You can check out all of our full length photography tutorials. If you like landscape photography and filters and all that jazz, check out the Photographing the World series that we did with Lyle Cardi. You're gonna love it.